everybody. Welcome to the Beastly Thoughts Show Live, the one where we talk about Bethesda's newest game. Robbie, what have you been playing, buddy? So, obviously this week, everybody's been playing the same game. We have been heavily anticipating it. This is probably going to be one of the biggest games of the generation. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. By Bethesda Game Studios. It is Rise of the Tomb Raider, of course. It's what everybody's been playing. Everybody's been talking about it. I mean, it's the big thing right now, right? Laura Croft, the new animation, the boobs, the ass is just better than anything I've seen. I've just been staring at the screen for the last couple of years. It's amazing game. No. No. <laughs> <laughs> Why you Guys, Fallout always, 4. Come on, let's get into it, man. Fallout 4, we've all been playing it. We're loving it. I know everybody here is loving it, right? You can't help but you can't help yourself but love it. Da, 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 da. Robbie, talk to me. What have you been up to? In Boston, what have you been? What have you been doing in Massachusetts this this week? Uh, everything. I gotta yeah. tell you guys, Fallout Four has literally taken over my life. This uh-huh. game, I had stupidly high expectations for this game. Yeah. It, <laughs> this game is unbelievable. How good it is! I cannot stop. My entire life is this game. This week, it has been my life. I will play, like, nonstop for, I swear, six, seven, eight hours. I'll be like, I'm bored of the game, I'm going to take a break, and I come back, like, five, ten minutes later, I cannot stop playing, and it's so <laughs> addicting. It's so good. I can't believe Bethesda did it again. This game is incredible. Everything about it is amazing to me. I cannot stop playing it. All right, so six out of ten, Robbie, is what you're saying? <laughs> yeah, six out of ten. Exactly. You say, how about you? What have you been up to in the wasteland? I've been really enjoying Fallout 4, guys. Um, it's everything that I loved about Fallout 3 and everything that wasn't included in Fallout 3. So to me, it's something that's very familiar and fresh at the same time. Very familiar, right? Yeah, it feels like you know a graphical upgrade to a game that we all loved, but it has all these new nuances and things that you can add and do. I'm really enjoying building up my campsites you know, with all my survivors, yeah. my settlements. That's something totally new. Uh, but the game so far feels... Just fun. That's the best way I can describe it. An amazing experience so far. I'd agree with Robbie. You know, a ten out of ten. I want to let the guys know who who are watching right now. Robbie uh, got into a situation uh, with a young lady who was into BDSM and um, dominatrix online. She came and visited him yesterday, last night, and things went a little too far, and so he can't show you guys his face today, unfortunately. But hopefully, put that sword into swordfish, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Yeah, it's basically back. I'm sick, okay? That's all we need to say. Yeah, that went a little too far, but okay. <laughs> yeah, guys. Uh, That's what the kids four, are calling man. it now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all the young kids. Are, yeah. I, I got to say, this is exactly what I thought was going to happen. I really thought I'd be playing more Black Ops 3, but as soon as I got my hands on Fallout 4, it's been nothing but that. Yeah, um, yeah. Just that feeling of going off and doing anything and having fun with it, uh, you know, just stumbling across situations, people stuck in crazy situations, uh, crazy mutated animals coming out of nowhere to kill you. Mm-hmm. I love the bat system. It feels so good to have it back. you know. Yeah. Uh, and believe it or not, I was like two or three hours into the game before I used it once. I was like, holy shit, let me try you know, see what happens with L1 and then vats. And it brought back everything that was really familiar about Fallout. I'm really happy with the game so far. I've probably gotten in 10 hours. Uh, and I'm like level 10 right now. I haven't been following the, the uh, storyline strategically. I've been kind of doing what I want to do, yeah. side quests. That's really what makes Fallout a, a great experience for me to just basically go off and make it your own game. Um, to, me, to me, Fallout is Fallout 3 and Fallout 4 so far, it's like a book, right, or a series of books even. You know, all with the same character. You get to you just kind of sit down and you just relax with it and you kind of immerse yourself in it, you know? Uh, as opposed to most video games, which are like adrenaline-packed thrill rides, Fallout is much more laid back. It's much more slow-paced. You get to you get to play it at your own pace and kind of you do what you want to do. If you just want to burn through the storyline, like the main storyline, you can do that. I think you could get through it in like six to ten hours, depending on how, how hard you go. Um, or you can do every little side quest and every you know find every bobblehead and magazine and you know talk to every character, explore every dialogue option, and you know just kind of 
slow play it. And that's kind of what I like to do is kind of slow it down and just kind of relax with it. And hopefully the game will last me a couple of months. You know, in my spare time, it's my game. I'm not live streaming it. I'm not making videos out of it. It's just me and, you know, the game just kind of relaxing. And I'm having a, a lot of fun with it, too. To me, all right, so it's kind of funny. Last week I said all they have to do is upgrade the graphics on Fallout 3 and I'll be happy. But in the first, I don't know, hour of the game, I'm like, damn, this is Fallout 3 with upgraded graphics, and I'm not that happy. <laughs> yeah. uh, but Because right off the bat, it feels exactly like Fallout 3. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it's hard to tell any differences. Until you start getting deeper into the game, once you see, like, yeah, you can build up these settlements, you, see a, you, know, you get to see a little bit more of the game, and you find out, yes, there is more to it. There are deeper systems than there were in Fallout 3 or New Vegas. Um, what do you guys think about like kind of the character interaction? You know, it feels very similar to Fallout. Are you are you satisfied? It doesn't feel like it evolved much to me. I'm um, really incredibly I'm... satisfied. Absolutely, I think I have done a, different, a ton of different companions as well. I've had Piper. I've had Codsworth with me. I've had uh, Valentine with me a little bit. Try and keep the the spoilers to a minimum, Robbie. Yeah, I'm definitely because gonna try and do that. Some of those people you just uh, mentioned I haven't even seen yet. Especially with a game like this, you know, it's so big and there's so many different side quests. When you're talking to someone, like you'll be talking about the main story, and then you go off and you might talk about a side quest no one else has done, but they've put more hours into the game than you, which is crazy. So, yeah, spoilers to this game are definitely real for uh, different people, but the relationships in this game are incredible, too. It feels like this world is so unbelievably realistic, and the people you meet, there are times where you develop a real relationship with these companions, and they literally stop to talk to you. They say, hey, do you have a minute? And they talk to you about personal things like family and different situations based on different characters. I'm not going to say who with what situations, but I am unbelievably impressed with how much these characters feel like real people. Like, I care about, like, Almost all of them. They are amazing people. Hearing their stories is incredible. Some of them even give you quests related to different things. I mean, I am blown away. It's unbelievable how well they have nailed everything in this game. But we'll get back to... Uh, for, for me, I haven't gotten that deep into it yet where I've really began to build up bonds with lots of different characters. I'm really just now getting my feet wet and jumping into the world. But one thing I will say uh, is that the, uh, the vocals actually having scripted scenes where you talk to people, they open up their mouth and they actually make movements and gestures. You sit down and talk to somebody and they'll actually turn towards you and have a conversation. Uh, it feels very similar to Fallout 3, but the fact that they've actually added actual audio, to me that frees a whole new degree of life into the game. Versus the, just The characters definitely talked in Fallout 3, but they weren't... They, the voices didn't match like the lip syncing, and a lot of times it, it didn't even feel... Like it, it felt very janky in Fallout 3. It still feels yeah. a little janky. Like you can, you walk away. The audio glitch sometimes. Like two people are talking at once, and you can't hear the person you're actually trying yeah, to talk to. Yeah, yeah well, stuff well, like well, that. It's still, you know, it's still a Bethesda game. I'm sorry. Yeah. Let me let me clarify because I wasn't being very clear. I mean your character in Fallout oh, 3. Oh yeah, you yeah. Didn't speak, uh, but now you're actually having a real conversation. And it just feels more real. It feels it breathes more life into the world, and I really appreciate that. I've run into a few glitches where my companions have fallen through the world. Uh, mm -hmm. Believe it or not, <laughs> I, uh, I was right with a dog meat going up some stairs, and he fell through the stairs. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I'm sure those kind of things will be patched. Already, people are exploiting this game. That kind of pisses me off. But of course, we we know that's going to happen. I've seen it don't matter. It's a single player game. Yeah, yeah, yeah but it's going to happen. Plus, have you guys noticed the little mod section? In the uh, Pit Boy, where you can, I guess, import mods. I have. I haven't. I haven't really explored it much. Well, yeah. there's nothing, nothing there yet. Nothing there. Okay. It, get, it gets yeah. me really excited. So I guess we're all in agreement that this game is awesome. Well, I got some. I definitely have some reservations about it. Uh, you know, like you said, there's definitely there is that Bethesda glitchiness to it. Um, yeah. You know, like I mentioned with the audio kind of overlapping and not not having the correct conversation take priority. Uh, mm -hmm. I've had some clipping issues with the world. I've had, I already had a mission become uncompletable because the door just wouldn't open. Uh, oh, me, me, and a, me and a detective were just standing there and he was supposed to unlock the door, but he just wasn't doing it. 
Did you reload the checkpoint? I had to reload the checkpoint, and then it worked the second time through. But it was like, okay. you know, before I realized that it was a glitch, it was like 20 minutes of me just trying to figure out what the hell was going on. Was I in the wrong yeah. place? You know, do I have to backtrack to find a different door? You know, that kind of thing. That's, you know, I, I'm, I'm accepting, okay, that these games have this kind of stuff because of what they offer. You know, these huge expansive worlds with so much to do and so much to explore. But it's a little frustrating to me that we're still seeing the exact same glitches we were seeing in Fallout 3 or in Oblivion. You know, like older games, especially since the game came out or it was went gold so early in comparison to when it was released, I, I am a little bit disappointed of how glitchy the game seems to be. And, mm-hmm. you know, that kind of yeah. stuff... Is disappointing to me. I would have liked to see Bethesda start moving that engine forward because it it feels. I, I can't confirm that it's the same engine that Fallout Three and Skyrim I, ran on, but it, it fucking feels is. like it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they said it's a uh, updated version of Skyrim's engine, and I agree with you, Briar. There are little glitches. Like some of them are hilarious. There are like I can't even tell you guys how many times I come back to Sanctuary and there's a Brahmin stuck in one of the houses. It's hilarious. <laughs> I love that though. But yeah, there are ones where like I'm playing a mission. Like I remember when I was on the Brotherhood of Steel airship, we had to yeah, go. Yeah, easy the there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We don't, we don't want to spoil this for people who haven't. That's not a spoiler. You know, there's an airship. They showed in the trailer. That's not a spoiler. But anyways, there's when you go to the like the Verbird is sort of the ship you can fly on and fast travel to. That's also in the trailer. Um, basically, one time I had to use it for a mission and it kind of glitched out. Like I had to reload the checkpoint actually a couple times before it worked. You know, the minor things like that, but. Everything about this game is so unbelievably good to me that I almost don't care. It does bother me a little bit, but the game is so good that I'm so forgiving of it. This has to be one of my favorite games of all time because I had impossibly high expectations for this game and it lived up to me. I, like... I sit up all day, all night playing this game. I mean, I can't sleep because I'm just thinking about it. It's so immersive. All the interactions, the story is amazing. The gameplay is incredible. I love this game. Well, this is my thing, okay? I think the game is great. But I also think Fallout 3 was great. How different is this from Fallout 3 is the, the real question. I think it's really different. I think they've changed a lot here. I, I don't know if I agree with that. To me, Fallout 3 is a great game. Yeah. If they just released Fallout 3 as a PS4, Xbox One graphics upgrade, a lot of people would just buy it just based on merit alone. Yeah. Uh, this, to me, feels like Briar said, very similar as far as the engine. The world definitely is more beautiful, but it's oh, so yeah. sim- it's so similar to me, uh, and that kind of makes me wonder what the next Skyrim type of experience is going to be because it feels very much like it. Did it live up to the hype? It's selling like crazy. It's sold 12... I'm trying to remember. It's on the top of my head, but I can't remember totally. It sold insanely for the first 24 hours. Mm-hmm. So as far as you know, commercial success, it's doing very well, but... People expected this game to just be head and shoulders above and beyond what Fallout 3 was. And for me, so far, it doesn't feel different enough for it to be that. But even if it was just like Fallout 3 with a slightly different story, everybody would love it. Yeah. yeah. You know, because it, thing, it's too. Fallout. Yeah. People love Fallout. Same thing with, with the Elder Scrolls series. It's the same story there. The games are always glitchy. You're always going to have issues with the world, but there's so much more to the world that you're yeah. able to kind of walk past the bad to enjoy the, the breath of all the good. I'm not disappointed with the game. Trust me, I, I, I'm really enjoying my time with it. Um, but I'm not blown away like I was with Fallout 3. When I first played Fallout 3, even the first couple of hours, I was just the scope, the magnificence of the world, just like the the detail, how many non-player characters there were and how many different quest lines there were and how you could just explore it at your own pace and go in any direction you wanted and get yourself in and out of trouble that way was new to me. It, it, you know, I'd seen it before in Morrowind, but I wasn't that. I'm not into that fantasy stuff as much as I am to the sci-fi stuff. So, for me, Fallout Three was just. It was really my first like in-depth experience with something like that. And there is definitely a lot of new stuff here, and there's definitely some huge improvements. The gunplay uh, when you're not in Vats is so much better yeah. than it was in Fallout Three. I don't even use Vats because the aiming and shooting feels so good. I'm impressed, and that's where. I have to disagree with you guys a little bit, although I understand where you're coming from, that it does feel similar to Fallout 3, but I actually think it feels a lot different because the shooting feels a lot different to me. I think shooting world... feels better. You know, it, it feels <laughs> more like a first-person shooter. It's still not, 
you know, it's not Black Ops or Destiny or Halo by any means, but it, yeah. it's usable, and that's an improvement over Fallout 3. <laughs> Plus, you've got the settlement building, and you've got the like, economy, building is very cool. economy, which I've gotten into. Oh, my God. Crafting your so own fun. weapons is very cool. Amazing. I love that. Yeah. yeah. It's just, there's so much in this game. It's ridiculous how much they've added. This is the thing, though. Like, Briar, when you first saw Fallout 3, that was kind of new on the last-gen hardware. First yeah, it was... Yeah. The first time I saw that huge leap, like I had Morrowind on my Xbox, my original Xbox. Mm-hmm. I played it. To me, it looked like a PC game. I was like, I don't really want to fuck with this. And then when I saw The Elder Scrolls Oblivion on PS4, PC, I was like, wow, this looks like a completely different experience than what I saw in Morrowind. Yeah. So when I bought it on my PS3, uh, I, I booted it up. I was like, holy shit, this really looks <laughs> like a, a huge, open, beautiful world. And so we had that last gen. How much further can they go with this gen? It's not going to be the same kind of experience. Yeah, they're definitely like, limited by the hardware on here too. You can, you, you know, Xbox One players. I feel awful for PlayStation yeah. Four players. I'm playing on primarily on the PlayStation Four. I also bought it on the PC just because I wanted to see the the graphical differences and the frame rate differences. And I can I can assure you the game is far superior on the PC than it is on the uh, PS4, and I've heard it's even yeah. worse on the Xbox One. I have not playing on the Xbox, myself. so... <laughs> but, like, I, you know, I'll run into a room with, you know, multiple characters to fight on the PS4, and that frame rate, man, it just... Yeah. Uh, that so, becomes your only option, because the frame rate is so bad, it's really hard to kind of be moving around and shooting at the same time. Yeah, yeah I actually watched a video from Digital Foundry on it. The uh, PS4 and Xbox One try to hit 30. The Xbox mm-hmm. One has more of an issue hitting a consistent 30. And um, when it comes to areas that have multiple enemies, the Xbox One drops, you know, substantially. PS4 yeah. drops during bosses and enemies that have multiple uh, special effects going on on the screen at once. Mm-hmm. But for the most part, the PS4 is able to deal with multiple enemies a lot better than the Xbox One. Also, the Xbox One has this thing where the frame rate will drop to zero. Mm-hmm. Every now and then, like, first, when you're leaving, yeah, when you're leaving and entering towns, and when you come into areas that have lots of enemies, the screen will freeze for, like, a half of a second. And so that's another thing that they have. But so far, you're absolutely right. PC is the best. PS4 and the Xbox. Also, so you'll see some patches for the consoles that kind of improve that frame rate. I am I'm a little disappointed in that. That it, you know, it has kind of, you know, with all, with that lead time. You know, they said the game's done, the game's gone gold, and then we get it, and it's like uh, it's not running really that great on the consoles here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It would have been nice if that was. Improved a little bit, optimized. A I can bit. tell you guys uh, firsthand because I've been playing. I'd say I put like I think my total time played on the Xbox One version now has been two days and six hours, which is insane. That's basically like half my time in the last week has been playing just the game. So I've had a lot of time to see how the frame rate runs, and here's what I'll say: I don't think it's as bad as people are saying, but definitely when there are a lot of enemies on screen, when there's like a fight between the Brotherhood of Steel and Super Mutants, it can chug, but it doesn't ruin the experience for me. It never gets so bad that like it hurts the game. There are times where I thought the game was going to crash, only once or twice, because it literally was like two frames per second. It was a slideshow. Wow. Like, just yeah. randomly. But for the most part, it's pretty consistent for me. Like It's been 30 frames per second. Like There are moments here and there where the frame rate will go down quite a bit, but it's like it doesn't happen that often, so I it hasn't hurt the experience for me at all. Okay. Uh, but but I overall, I gotta say, I'm, I'm, I'm really pleased with the way the game turned out. I'm just I'm immersed in the game. I'm having fun with it. I just, actually, before I came up here to do the podcast, I was playing it downstairs on the couch. You know, the whole family's just sitting there watching me play it. You know, it's like, yeah. you know, it's just that. It's, it's that intoxicating. Same story here. Kate, uh, she was watching me play. Now she's playing. Uh, all the kids watching. I just turned it off. I was like, fuck, I gotta do that goddamn show. <laughs> but, I just gotta get back <laughs> in, yeah. yeah. Like yeah, I so said, what... I mean, I've been playing it nonstop. Like, it's become my life this week. And I still feel like, how many hours have I put into this game? Like, at least almost 50 now, I feel like. It's been a lot. And wow. I still feel like there are so many locations I haven't found, so many things to discover. I mean, even going back to different locations, you'll find new things. Like, you never know what you're gonna find. I mean, just the other day, just last night, I was doing a quest. I was talking to this guy up on this bridge, and there's a city, like, just right in front of us, and there was a super mutant behemoth storming through the city, just fucking shit up. And I'm like, I gotta get down there and kill that guy. I have a fat man. I'm like, I'm gonna take the fat man. I'm gonna run down there and blast his ass into oblivion. 
And there were people, like, there was a battle going on. There were, like, mini nukes being fired at this thing. There were ghouls running everywhere. It was insane. It was awesome, yeah. though. Like, moments like that I, I, can't, I can't wait. But now I'm expecting this, so stop spoiling the game. Yeah, please. Please, right. It was a random I'm, moment. I'm, that no, it wasn't. The exact same thing's going to happen to me, and I'm going <laughs> to... Don't spoil any more of the game. I really want to get back into it. i got a question for you guys. It seems like we all really enjoyed this game. Uh, has anybody gotten back into Black Ops 3 at all this week? No, I actually made a video about that today. Okay. Did you? Hmm. Would you care to elaborate? Well, so, you know, it's hard to play multiple PvP <laughs> games, right? And, you know, Destiny really has me hooked as far as PvP goes, and the Trials of Osiris especially, you know, really ha getting into Trials of Osiris, having that 3 versus 3 gameplay where, you know, your whole team is coordinated and you're really, you know, trying to win together and talking about strategy and, you know, working together to get to five wins, to get to seven wins, to get to nine wins and go to the lighthouse. You know, the the rewards are so big for just those, like, you know, an hour, hour, hour and a half worth of play that going into Call of Duty style matches with a bunch of random people and, you know, kids screaming obscenities, I've... I think I've moved on past Call of Duty. <laughs> like, it's just, like, it doesn't offer the same thrill that it used to, and I feel like, uh, you know, other games, they've just kind of eclipsed it. You, you yeah. know what, Brian? I, I, gotta, I gotta say I, I agree with you there. Um, I'm not as big into Destiny as you are. I love it, though. And even playing Destiny and getting together with you guys and my friends and playing, it's a different kind of experience than I have playing Call of Duty. Now, I will say that when Robbie and, and my wife and uh, um, Unreal Gamer, we were all together playing zombies and playing different modes. It was very fun. We were very well coordinated, but very seldom will you get that in Call of Duty. Most of the time, you're going in there, you, you're teamed up with random people. And I had a little, a little situation at the beginning of the week where I was playing some Last of Us with my brother. My other brother just got a PS4 and The Last of Us. So I got two of my siblings on now, man. We're doing good. And uh, we played for a little while, and then I went to Call of Duty, and it just felt so bad. It, even Black Ops 3, all the camping and all the crap that was going on, there was really no communication, and I just backed out. I was like, uh, I'll just take a break. I gotta <laughs> say, I love Black Ops 3. I think it's a fantastic game, but it's so fast, I feel like I need to like have a moment and take a break, because that game, the time to kill, it is so fast-paced that like, I feel like I need to just slow down for a moment. Like It's almost stressful how fast that game is. And have you guys tried the hardcore mode? Holy shit. It it's like one, yeah, no, it's in multiplayer. Uh, the hardcore mode is where basically one shot kills. Oh, with no HUD and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no HUD. It's just man, that's the the mode my wife likes to play the most. You see somebody, whoever pulls out first. That's fun. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's very fast and frantic. But I've been on Fallout. Uh, Call of Duty's kind of taking a back seat for now. Yeah. And um, I think that they'll, it'll be that way for many more hundreds of hours. So. I like Black Ops 3, but I can't stop playing Fallout 4. I mean, this is... I can't believe this game lived up to the hype for me. It's everything I wanted it to be. It really is incredible. I can't see myself stopping anytime soon. The guy at the GameStop uh, right here, right by my house, he told me they had like four uh, two, uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider pre-orders for the Xbox One, and they had 111 uh Pre-orders for Fallout 4. Oh my god! Just incredibly bad decision by Microsoft to release it. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> incredibly. Even if it was coming out next week or the week after, yeah, I feel like it could have like had a little room to breathe. I want to play that game. I'm looking forward to playing that game. Yeah, I really like the first one, and I'm really looking forward to this next one. But like, time on, it's like tired. Right up yeah. Fallout 4. It's just silliness. You're against a game that is going to take up everyone's time, and there's no way you're going to be able to find time to play Tomb Raider. Like, I, I've heard fantastic things about that game, and I love the last one. I'm sure it's going to be phenomenal, but I'm going to play it in a, like a month or two from now. Not now. So, yeah, yeah. I, I think it was poor uh, business decisions being made uh, somewhere at Microsoft Square. Somebody made that choice to release. God, to go against something like uh, Fallout 4 is just harebrained, if you ask me. Yeah. I mean, even like Battlefront, going against Fallout would lose. You know, Call of Duty going out on the same day against, um, I don't know, Call of Duty actually sold 12 million. So they, they actually did really well. Yeah. Uh, but them going against Fallout would have been a poor decision as well. You know, Fallout, everybody and their mom wanted this game. We all see what happened. As soon as the game came out, we're all playing it. I'm sure mm -hmm. you find a time for Destiny, Briar, but this is the only game that's actually pulled you away enough that you're sitting with your family and playing it and enjoying it. 
Yeah, I so, mean, I, I played both games today. I played Destiny because I really wanted to do a trials run with some friends today and had a great time. Uh, then I did a little work around the house. We're remodeling the house, so it's like there's a lot. That takes a lot of time, right? It's a yeah. slow remodel yeah. where we're doing a lot of the work ourselves. Yeah. So that takes up a lot of my time right now. But uh, after I did that, I just sat down and relaxed with some Fallout 4, and I had a great time. Just, yeah. just chilling. It's, but it's Trials, man, game. Trials of Cyrus is just a, it's a hell of a fun game mode. I've never tried it, not once. It's unbelievably fun. I, I, how do you get into it? I've never been able to just join Well, it's a power level matters type of deal, right, where you got to have good gear. You know, like the better your gear is, the less damage you'll take from other guardians and the more damage you'll do to other guardians. Excuse me. And <laughs> uh, you get in there, it's a three versus three game type, and you, it's, you know, best of, I think, what is it, best of five, or first... First team to get five wins, and it's elimination, so all you got to do is kill the other three players, and then the round's over, unless they have, like, reses or something. Uh, and you just you got to beat them five times, uh, and then you do that nine times, and you go to the lighthouse. You get some of the best gear in the game. Oh, it is, okay. It's really it's really tense. It's really rewarding. you got teams that are working together. and Super competitive. You know, yeah, it's super competitive, and it's, you know, I really like playing PvP, but I've never played a game... A PvP where I felt like there was, there were stakes. Yeah, something something really to gain, something to lose. Now, since they've rebalanced the game, does that work better now? Or, um, yeah, the the weapon balance I think is a lot better than it used to be. Pulse rifles are probably a little bit overpowered compared to the other primaries, but nothing like hand cannons were before. Um, shotguns still have a little bit too much range, from in my opinion, but. <clears throat> it's a it's a fun game mode, you know. It's and there there's actually a weapon balancing patch coming out in November. Okay, all right. Well, I'd, I'd like to give that a try sooner or later. Kate actually been asking me how do we get into it, mm -hmm. so I've asked the man the myth. So now I got a little bit of information. We'd like to make that happen one day soon. So okay, guys, we talked about Fallout. We talked about the lack of Call of Duty, um, and now we got a little bit of news. You guys want to get into the news for the watchers today, the viewers? Yeah, sure. Listeners. All right, so Fallout 4 shipped over 12 million copies in its first day of sale, representing sales of over $750 million. Which is an awful lot. Looks like, like we'll lot. be seeing Fallout 5. Oh. Yeah, confirmed. <laughs> That's going to happen. $750 million, wow. This doesn't surprise me at all. Uh, everybody on my friends list that I talked to, like when I was, even people who primarily play Destiny or who played De Destiny almost solely, were super excited for Fallout 4. People who never played Fallout 3 were very excited for Fallout 4 just because of all the chatter. It's the word of mouth. Hearing. It gets around. Yeah. It's like this incredible game, and it's like a it's like an event now. Like, Fallout 4 was like an event coming up. Everyone yeah, was so Everybody excited. Everybody was looking forward to it. Yeah. Fallout 3, I felt like, was more of a sleeper. It was a big game. But it wasn't like a Call of Duty release. It wasn't we like didn't a know what it was Halo gonna be. release. Yeah. It, yeah, and it was a completely different developer for the Fallout series. You know, Bethesda took that over. Uh, and it, yeah. Fallout 2 was like way back in the 90s. You know, so it was a top-down isometric isometric game. You know, so it's completely different. Uh, so people, not everybody was super excited for Fallout 3. It didn't have that buzz, but the word of mouth, the people enjoyed the hell out of that game, and then New, New Vegas. There's a lot of people who played New Vegas and never played Fallout 3. You know, they yep. just... That's that's exactly how I was introduced to it, right? I was yeah. going to buy... Um, I can't even remember the game I was going to buy. I went to the record exchange back home in Ohio, and I was talking to the guy there, one of the managers, and I told him I wanted to get something new that was going to really pull me into the world, make me excited. He said, have you ever played Fallout? I said, no, what is that? He said, you never played Fallout? What? Fallout? Yeah, I would be like, what the hell? Is there something wrong here? We need to fix this now. <laughs> he said, Fallout 3 is right there. He said, if you play that game, it'll be one of your favorite games of all time. And I looked at it, and I was like, uh, I looked over at Kate. I said, do we want to try this? He said, dude, please, just buy this game. You will not be sorry. And he's someone I trust. His name's James. I took that shit home, and I played it probably within two hours. I was like, oh, my God. This is something different. It was just an amazing game, one of those yeah. crazy experiences. And you're right. A, a lot of young kids who don't play, who've never played Fallout 3, they're I would all, be like, you are my missing son's out. Talking like, we about need it, to get you, know? you on this. My son was telling me today some of his buddies in school have never played Fallout 3 before, and oh. that's the game that their parents bought them, that they're all, everybody's so excited about. Everybody's really happy about this game, man. Yeah. yeah. Very seldom do we get experiences like this that keep you really entangled and engrossed for this period of time that's all fun. 
And nobody yeah, else makes just, games like this. But this is, seems to be the only people that make games like this. You know, they know so what they're doing. You have yeah. to wait. You have. You don't. It's not like uh, if you're a big fan of GTA, you also play, you know, Saints Row and a couple mm-hmm. other games that are kind of similar to it. Uh, you know, that. GTA is the big stuff, but in the best, but you know, there's some other stuff in there too that's along similar lines. Nobody else makes games like this. I'd yeah. say the closest uh, company that does something similar to this would be CD Projekt Red. The Witcher mm-hmm. Three is another one of those crazy worlds where everything has a meaning and it's a very fulfilling experience all the way through. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it's more similar to Skyrim, I guess. Yeah, it's the same lore, the same type of yeah. world environment. Yeah, but I see what you're saying though. It's like it's it's a similar build structure yeah. as far as everything. The, the aesthetic in the story is it doesn't strike me the same way that Fallout does. Yeah, yeah, Fallout yeah. for me, believe it or not, I I think I agree with you there, Brian. The Fallout world versus the uh, Elder Scrolls world, the Fallout world to me is more interesting. I yeah. prefer Fallout as well. Yeah, because I love Elder Scrolls to death, but I prefer Fallout a little bit. It seems more of a realistic possibility that nukes could go off, things could really go bad, and that could happen one day. Then we look up and see a dragon coming down and rob you on top of it. God, yeah, I love it's like, have you ever seen water. a TV show? It's like you know, after humans or after us or something like that, where they they just like they do like a CG slow mo or fast mo of a city that just gets decrepit over time after humans have abandoned it. Yeah. It's fun it's, to see like what like the future might be like in this. That's, you know. It's pretty old, right? It came out a few years ago. Life yeah. After us. Yeah. yeah, I saw it with the lions walking through the buildings and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's cool. It's just a. It's it's cool to imagine. Cool and cool to like be in that world and exploring. You know, find Le- Lincoln's repeater rifle. You know. <laughs> Yeah, and the other thing we didn't talk about too is all the uh, the legendary enemies and weapons in the game. There are tons of unique weapons, like the alien blaster and like the righteous authority. Uh, all right, keep, um, the, keep the spoilers rifle. down to a minimum. Robbie, you gotta That's stop. It's not really a spoiler. What hey, it, is, it is definitely a spoiler. Don't do it. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. Yeah. Anyways, when you're when you encounter a pack of enemies, there is a chance that it will spawn a legendary enemy, and a legendary enemy is basically a way more difficult and limited version of that enemy, which has a chance to drop a special piece of armor or a weapon, and mm-hmm. literally, like, pretty much every enemy type in the game, whether it be a mole rat, a bloat fly, a death claw, a mire alert, there are legendary versions of just about every enemy, and they are scary as hell, too. Yeah, you guys, yeah, you guys know the, uh, the rad stags in the game, they're like the muted deer with the two heads. Mm-hmm. I yeah. came across a legendary rad stag. It was glowing bright red. It was massive, and it had horns, and it was really intimidating. I just walked out of this house and saw it attacking uh, Preston Garvey. I was like, holy shit, that thing is scary looking. So it sounds like the dominatrix you met yesterday. All right, um, we're going to continue <laughs> on with our news, guys. There's been a lot of people who speculate that Call of Duty is going downhill, going downtown. It Call of Duty Black Ops 3 has made $550 million within its first three days on sale. Yeah. Are we going to get another Call of Duty? Of course. Just for, for a perspective, Black Ops 2 made $500 million on its very first day. First and that day. was where the series peaked. So, to be honest, this is not as good as the well, previous game. This decline is it's still impressive. It's not as good as Black Ops 2, but is it comparable to Advanced Warfare or Call of Duty Ghosts? I'd say yes. I th- sure. think it's less, yeah. but it's close. I don't know. You the, guys to me, the success of Call of Duty game? is based on the the long term viability of each game. Uh, people people enjoy Call of Duty because they get to play it for you know months at a time. That value that value is really represents something large for most people. You know, getting a single player zombies in multiplayer that you can stick with. You can stick with zombies in multiplayer e- either or all year long if if you're into it. And there's communities built around it. You know, we all know about the Call of Duty community on YouTube. It's huge. Yeah. Uh, he used to have you in it. But he used to have me in it. <laughs> but I think that that community is getting smaller. And as it gets smaller, I think that the hype for the big releases gets a little bit less and less and less. And Call of Duty just doesn't seem to be evolving. I don't know. It seems to be evolving in a strange way to me. Yeah, they were doing it very slow. I mean, Advanced Warfare was definitely the biggest evolution, whether you liked it or not. They mm-hmm. really changed it up, which I appreciated, but in the end, I didn't love the game all that much. Black Ops 3 was kind of in between Advanced Warfare yeah. and the traditional movement, so they are evolving 
but it took them a long time to do it. And are they making enough big changes in a fast enough pace? I don't really know if they can stay relevant. I mean, we'll have to see what Infinity War does with next year's Call of Duty. They might totally change them. We have no idea. So vehicles. They might bring, bring vehicles yeah. to Call of Duty. Let us drive. Let us get in helicopters and jets. I, I'm wondering if, if this is just, <laughs> you know, at some point there were a ton of World War II shooters out there, and people just got sick of them. It wasn't that they weren't good games. They, they were still releasing good World War II shooters, mm-hmm. and just people were kind of done with it. You know, yeah, and I wonder if that on. is kind of what's going on with Call of Duty right now. That's a, 550 million is nothing to see, sneeze at. Uh, but I just don't feel the same fervor and passion around that game that I used to like. Yeah. kind of... Like, you remember five, six years ago when all your friends would buy Call of Duty and you would play it all the time with them. It's not the same anymore. That doesn't really happen. I mean, a lot of people still play it, but it's not... Like, it was, like, the biggest thing in the world a few years ago. It was the franchise in gaming that defined it. Like, even Call of Duty 4 was the one that, like, modernized the modern shooter, and now it's just kind of the same thing. Well, I think for Briar, Black Ops 1 was the last Call of Duty that you were crazy about, right? Or was it... You like Ghost quite a bit. I, I like Ghost quite a bit. Okay. I, I know that's not a popular opinion. Black Ops 2 I really enjoyed. I think my favorite Call of Duty of all time might be Black Ops 1. I'm just thinking about the excitement that I had because I came to Call of Duty late. I didn't want to jump into that because everybody was playing Call of Duty and I was like, no, I'm going to play my RPGs. I want to play my adventure games. Get the hell away from me. All my friends were like, man, you got to play Call of Duty. I was like, no, it's just shooting people. It's boring to me. I ended up playing... Uh, Modern Warfare 2 first, and I fucking loved it. And then I, I got Modern Warfare 3, and then Black Ops 2. And Black Ops 2 was a game I played for a full year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, that I, game I was amazing. I, I didn't want to play That was the last Call of Duty that I played like that, where I felt like every single day I had to play it. It stayed fun. It stayed consistent. And then when you look at the ones that have come after, they really haven't really done enough. Uh, to, to bring something new and fresh to it. When they did, they kind of went the wrong direction. They, they've changed the way the game plays a little bit, like it's a lot more vertical, but it, they haven't changed the structure of the game, and I think that's where people are getting boring. You know, you still you still level up your guns, and you still get new sights and silencers and grips, and, you know, you, now there's, like, more... There's more graphical upgrades that you can get, and you can get, like, different, you know, boots or hats or whatever, but... The ultimate progression of it feels the same as it did in Call of Duty 4 or Modern Warfare 2, where you know you, you level up and then you prestige and you start the process over again. And to me, that just feels kind of old, especially now in like a post-Destiny world where you know playing the PVE, playing the PvP, kind of all blends together into this one character that I just keep getting stronger and stronger and stronger. Oh, well, the yeah. thing that to me, the thing that made makes Destiny so unique is. Everybody doesn't have the same weapon. It's kind of the luck of the draw, what you're able to attain to get something awesome. They kind of tried that with Advanced Warfare, where they were dropping specific uh, versions of weapons. Yeah, legendaries, yeah. elites, yep. and, yeah. and, and so you, drops. you could actually have something different than everybody else. They kind of made your character feel new. They kind of stepped back in Black Ops 3 from that, where everybody can kind of have the same weapon with the same perks on it and the same attachments. And it kind of feels like everybody has the exact same chance. But in Destiny... It's more of a, a unique experience, and I think that in Advanced Warfare they tried to do that as well. I think if they did, if they continued with that in Call of Duty, it might make people enjoy it more because the fact is, in Destiny, you know you're going up against someone who probably doesn't have the exact same setup that you do. Yeah. You know, your weapon might be slightly different, theirs might be different, and I think that that's probably what they need to do to bring people more into the Call of Duty world to enjoy it more. Yeah. To make it more of a unique experience rather than everybody has the same shit. It might seem early to bring this up, but I think you can discuss this pretty much whenever. I'm kind of looking to the future of Call of Duty uh, because Infinity Ward is making their game, whether that's Ghosts 2 or something else, next year. They've been working on it for three years. What do you guys think they need to do to bring back Call of Duty? Can they still salvage it? Like, will they do a Ghosts 2? Will they do something different? And what kind of movement system will they have for multiplayer? Will they do their whole own thing, or will they kind of do what's been done the last couple years? Well... All three developers seem to be doing their own thing, if you ask me. They're all going their own direction. It doesn't seem like they're trying to stay too influenced by one another. And I would like to see Ghost 2. Uh, I told you guys recently I was playing Call of Duty Ghosts. 
I would too, but people, most people did not like that game. That's the problem. Like it got such a poor reception. Would they even bother doing a Ghost Two? Would well, they take that chance? You, you, you think they're going to make a Titanfall too? People, people <sighs> I don't like know. that either. I mean, it's the evolution of a franchise, and and Ghost is a franchise now, just like uh, Advanced Warfare is now, just like Black Ops is. Yeah. So I'm, I'm I'm hoping that they're going to continue with that franchise and push it forward and keep boots on the ground like they did in Ghost. They I don't really care forward. what they call it. What I want to see is that Infinity Ward engine that is so tight and just so responsive and the netcode is so good. And I want to see them you know, up the graphical fidelity a little bit. Add some color to an Infinity Ward yeah. game. That'd be cool. Yes. It's an all gray, green, green, and brown. Uh, you know, a little bit... Uh, a wider... Uh, a wider array of weapons, of equipment... Um, I know that it's harder to balance, but I don't really care. I'm not, I'm not concerned with how hard it is to make the game. I just want a good game. Um, and I would like to see... I'd like to see them innovate on the game modes a little bit. You know, like... Yeah. Like, they have new ones here and there, but they're all pretty much the same. Yeah, the separation... I, th- I think, to me, what feels oldest in Call of Duty is the separation of multiplayer zombies and, and uh, single-player... And I'd like to somehow see them start to bring that all together into one awesome experience. They kind of dipped their toes in the water. I'd say with Black Ops 3, there was a little bit of progression between the three modes, but it's like barely doing it. But who knows, Briar? You might be onto something. They could be testing the waters for like one game that ties all three together. But I mean, I'm always excited for an Infinity War game because I think they just play so much better than... The netcode is excellent. Oh, yeah. I'll say that. Spot on. I think they got the best deck code in any game. <laughs> like, any multiplayer game. I think Infinity Ward, Call of Duty's have the best net code of any any other multiplayer game. I agree. What else I do we have for news? Oh, there's a few few things left. Not too much. <laughs> Rob, I haven't much news this week. I'm sorry, all right? This has been Fallout. The people who create news... It's Fallout 4. Week. That's all people have been doing. Like, what do you expect? <laughs> all the news outlets are off. They're playing Fallout. Basically. The best-selling games for October have been announced. I'll Robbie, open you want to give us a rundown? Yep. So, in order, the best-selling game of October was Halo 5 Guardians of the Xbox One, which was only on sale for, what, four days? So that's really impressive. Number two is NBA 2K16. Who cares? Assassin's Creed Syndicate was number three for PS4 and Xbox One. It's still coming to PC, I think, either this month or next month. Uh, Man NFL 16, WWE, FIFA, Destiny the Taken King is at number 7, uh, Yoshi's World, and it came out in September, wow. Yeah, so Taken King did really <laughs> well, Yoshi's Woolly World was number 8, uh, Uncharted the Nathan Drake Collection was number 9, and Rock Band 4 at number 10. So, wow. kind of some surprises, especially because uh, Halo 5 was only on sale for 4 days in October, so that's yeah. incredible to we'll see. But that's not really a surprise for me. It's a Halo game. Yeah, it Halo's sort of big. is. Yeah, it Every, sort of is, but it is Halo at the same time. Like that's everybody pretty who's really into the the Microsoft and the Xbox ecosystem. That's their number one game that they wait for. Everybody's excited. Who really grew up with the Xbox 360? There's no way they'd miss Halo Five. So to me, that's not four days. is really amazing to be the number one selling game in just four days. Uh, so I'm not really that shocked by that. But the NBA, you said NBA 2K16 was the number two. Uh, yes. That's kind of a shock, because I'm not in that ecosystem of, at all in Madden or NBA. Or, I don't know if people even buy those games, but apparently they, they buy, sell really well. Uh, buy, sports, game, sports gamers are a lot like Call of Duty gamers, where they'll just buy that game every year and play it. Yep. You know, Call of Duty, there's a lot of Call of Duty people who, you know, they buy Call of Duty and they play it all year. They're not even really like fans of video games. They just get their Call of Duty fix. That's basically what they play. And yep. even, Madden, yeah. Madden, NHL, NFL, like all, even the MLB games. Yep. You know, there's there's people who just buy MLB The Show every year. It's really popular, and I don't know anyone who buys them, but they sell really well. So. Actually, I have a friend who buys MLB The Show every year. He plays 162 game season every year. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Holy <laughs> damn. Yeah. He wants to make it real. That's for well, Yeah, there's a lot of people out there who enjoy sports games that I don't say anything bad about that. I think that Some sports good. games are fantastic. I used to be a Madden guy. I used to play Madden every year. I eventually, you know, that game doesn't change enough really. I used to I I used to buy the MLB the show every year. Uh, again, it just 
you know, how, it's hard for me to justify spending sixty dollars on the same fucking game every year with an up, upgraded <laughs> roster. But sometimes, if you play a game a lot and then you take a break from the franchise and come back, like even with something like Call of Duty, the same can apply to sports games. Mm-hmm. I haven't bought a sports game in a long time, but honestly, I've been thinking about getting something. I'm like, I'd like to try something different because I always play shooters and open world games and pretty much all the same types of games. It's nice to try something new and see. Yeah, change it up. Know. In the yep. Genesis era, I've never been a hockey fan. Uh, I have gone to hockey games, but it's usually just because I like hanging out. <laughs> you know, it's like it's a, it's a fun, fun, fun atmosphere. Uh, but I've never like watched hockey on TV or anything, and I don't follow it. But I used to buy hockey games on on uh, Sega Genesis because they were awesome games. They were fun to play. You know, they were just it was a really fast action game. Damn. So, I mean, just because. Just because you don't like NFL doesn't mean that Madden is a bad game. It's well, you know, back when I used to, I used to be a drinker, guys. I used to throw them back. And back when I get together and have parties at my house with my buddies, I'd have NCAA, whatever year it was. I would always have that game. It'd be five or six guys. We just go around drinking and playing that game until we couldn't fucking control it anymore. Yeah. NBA Jam, remember the NBA Jam? Oh, he's on that fire. That game yeah. was so fun. Yes, it is. It still is. <laughs> Oh man, I, I should I, I should pull out my Sega Genesis and boot that game up because that game used to be freaking great. It came out. Uh, they re-released it on last yeah, I don't year's think it was consoles. Good though, right? It was I thought good it was version. the same, wasn't it? Was it? I don't know. I don't yeah, really uh, into it. They, they it added new giant. characters to it, but for me, it felt pretty much the same. NBA Jam, you can't lose with that game. If it's for a party atmosphere, you want to make people laugh, you want to do yeah. awesome shit. You yeah. really can't lose an NBA. A four game. player, four player, yeah. multiplayer. Yeah. It, that game, it was two-on-two two basketball, right? Or was it three-on-three? Three? Two-on-two. Two-on-two, yeah. So it's two-on-two, and you just, you know, all four people could control one character. Mm-hmm. And, you know, once you start getting good at it, you're passing the ball back and forth. And Stop you get a shot. guy scores like three times in a row, and then, boom, he's on, on fire. fire. And this. Oh, man, that game was fun to sell. Yeah. I wish you guys had it on PS3, man. I'd just pull it out and play with you. It's, yeah. It's, it's really a fucking fun game. Yeah. I sold my PS3, so uh, sorry. My oh. cat just knocked mine over. Damn. I don't know if it works. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking cat. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I got two. I'm going to make sure that I'm knocking my shit over. That's so crazy we got cat. one more. We got one more bit of news for you guys, and um, I'm hoping that, that this actually means something, Robbie. New Silent Hill game, quote, needs to happen, end quote, says Norman Reedus of Walking Dead fame. So, of course, we all know this story. He was Norman Reedus was supposedly going to be the, the lead actor in the new Silent Hills game, Konami, Hideo Kojima. Uh, Konami said, fuck Kojima, fuck everything he touched. Everybody who ever known him is fired. Find their families and kill them. <laughs> and uh, so Norman Reedus was axed. So was Guillermo del Toro. He was axed. But obviously, and, and del Toro said something recently in an interview as well, that this game was going to be like groundbreaking as far they as... They really the- want it to happen. You can tell they wanted this game to happen, and they were excited about the project. It's something different for them. I mean, they're both, like, a big... I mean, Guillermo del Toro is a huge director. Like, he's really great at what he does, and Norman Reedus, obviously, from The Walking Dead, he's awesome, too. And to have him in a video game, I think that's awesome exposure for the gaming industry, and it's a really awesome thing for them to do. And Crimson so it was definitely Peak's heartbreaking. Stuff. Crimson Peak, his new movie... <laughs> But I do love uh, Pan's Labyrinth and stuff like that. You saw it? It was no good. It, yeah, it just man, it was it wasn't the one. Really? Okay. I could tell by the early trailers that I wasn't going to like it. I went in there thinking, please let it be better than the trailers, and it wasn't. He, he likes Labyrinth to switch it up. Like he he doesn't release the same movie every time. That's for sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, he didn't this time either. I've never <laughs> seen Pan's Labyrinth. That game, that movie looks really creepy. Oh though, man, you need to watch it. It's so good. It's he like said, a it creepy really version creepy. of the old Labyrinth from the eighties. <laughs> uh, uh, different worlds, man, and, and Pan's okay. Labyrinth is some creepy ass shit. It's a good yeah. movie. It's the not end? super silly like the old one. Well, the thing is, I don't know how closely Hideo Kojima was tied to uh, the Fox engine, right? I don't know if he had any input on it or if he's somehow responsible for any of that tech coming together. But if he was, if he is, he may still have the ability to pull his, pull a team together because you know now that his contract is over with Konami. A lot of the people he worked with are probably going to be wanting to come to wherever he's at to yeah. work with him. And if he's able to get maybe a, a contract with a big company like Sony or Microsoft and they give him a few million dollars to continue on, build whatever he wants to build, and what if Silent Hills is something that he says, okay, I can't call it Silent Hills. 
but we can call it something else and we can continue. We can go get Norman Reedus. We can go get Guillermo del Toro and make this shit happen. I think it'd be awesome. And I if don't they know... keep talking about getting on the project this much, like they really want this game to happen. You can tell. Both the thing of is money, right? Is, you know, Norman Reedus, he's going to cost a lot of money. The guy's super hot right now. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, getting Guillermo del Toro in there is going to cost a lot of money. Hideo Kojima, let's say he's got a, he's the one who has to raise the money. Well, he's got this history of going way over budget and taking too long to make these games. <coughs> who makes it? Who gives him this money? Like, how much money is this going to cost? And then, how much is it going to actually cost? You know, two years when it's two years over budget or overdue. You know, it's the Kojima. You but, have but, to be one. This is my thing, right? And you're right, Briar. Uh, Kojima does have a history of going over budget. His games take very long, but he made Metal Gear Solid Five. Yeah. And that's game of the year contender for sure, right? Yeah. Everybody but... played the game, loved it. It's a beautiful game. It's an awesome game. He's the guy behind it. There's going to be a company that says, here, we're going to throw bags of money at you. Do what you want to do. Because every game that you've made has been a stellar AAA title. Every single one. So we want to get you to work with us to make AAA games for us to make us look better. So here, let's throw you money. Get who you want to get. Shit. If Activision is spending $6 billion for King to buy a, a mobile game company, mm -hmm. these companies can spend a few hundred million to get Kojima where he needs to be so he can make awesome games. Because that's what he does. That's my opinion. <laughs> if I had six billion dollars, I don't know if I'd, I'd throw that gamble out there. Man, I wouldn't. Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> Just throw it. I don't know if minds. I'd step up to that particular plate. <laughs> crush, man. We never talked about this, I don't think. I don't think we hit it last week either. But six billion dollars for Candy Crush... Star Wars is only four billion. Lucas Lucas Films, all the Star Wars trilogy, all the Star Wars lore. Activision could have owned that. Yep. You know? Did we talk about that in the uh, Call of Duty franchise that's happening? So like the movie King is, uh, he's um, they're they're a money making, yeah, you know, mobile. They they make a ton of money. Yeah. Uh, they they own it on mobile. They own it in um, in the East. You know, in China, in Japan, they're just. They're very well known. They make a lot of money, so it's it's a shocking number to see. But it's you know the analysis I think proves that it was actually well. You know, actually from from what purchase. I heard by watching one of my other favorite podcasts out there, uh, Colin and Greg Live, mm -hmm. uh, King made five hundred and fifty million dollars last year mm -hmm. as a whole company. So they paid them twelve times what. They made in a year just to acquire the company, and it's going to take up until the middle of next year before it's finalized. I just think that's a lot of money. The king must it be is the a king. Lot of money. King must be the king at getting you to pay all your damn money. <laughs> well, they they've been doing it with Candy Crush pretty well. There is no <laughs> way in hell this is worth one point five billion dollars more than Star Wars. Like that's how much more they paid. There is the no way in hell. That is worth I'm more sure, than Star Wars. I'm sure that there are guys who probably work at Activision who are not specialized in this field who probably said the same thing you did, Robbie. But there are guys who crunched the numbers and saw how much money Candy Crush has made probably since it's been out and see maybe some of the other mobile uh, games that King has made and says, hey, this will pay for itself in X amount of years. Yeah, you look That's at the way uh, – you look at the – the way these things make money too is a, like a Candy Crush and like a mobile game developer, they're making money in a flat line. They just keep making the same amount of money day after day after day, month after month after month. That's true. You look at the you look at how much money Star Wars franchise makes. It is a big ass peak when the movie comes out, <laughs> and then it starts dropping, 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 dropping. <laughs> big ass peak next movie. Dropping, 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 dropping. <laughs> You know, they, so. they, get a, they get a little bump when the DVDs and Blu-rays come out, but yeah, yeah sure, you know, or you know, new toys or new series and stuff like that. But I mean, there are peaks and valleys with Star Wars. Whereas a mobile game developer, it's just it's going to be a pretty flat line. I still think a way better investment for them was the other piece of news that they did. They opened their uh, Activision Blizzard Studios, the oh, film yeah. studio is going to be making the Call of Duty movies as well as the Skylanders TV show. Like the Skylanders TV show, that could be huge for kids. Like that That's might make a shit ton of money. That's way smarter to me than the mobile acquisition for an unproven developer. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, okay. look at the track record of uh, video game movies. It's like a yeah. no-brainer. <laughs> yeah, it makes perfect <laughs> sense. Holy shit. Why well, no one's doing it right. right. That's why. why. Why hasn't anybody ever thought of this before? We'll take these video games and make movies out of them. 
<laughs> yeah, Nintendo's coming next. No, man, uh, Brian is right. It is a kind of scary place, uh, space to get into, you know, video game movies, but the Warcraft trailer does actually look pretty good. Yeah, if they do yeah. it right, man. They can, they can make a lot of money with the franchise. That will make a ton of money. I'm just not... I Call can't, of Duty, Skylanders... Call of Duty. Call of Duty is great, right? But none of the stories have actually grabbed me like that to make me want to go watch a movie about it. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. but if you, you you do you make American Sniper two and put Call of Duty on the top, <laughs> and it makes yeah. an extra hundred million. Oh, you, you just made the fucking idea. <laughs> oh my god! You just made the movie, Brian. You're not even going to get credit or something. Take off, Activision. You got oh, Brian Robbie, a brand new executive, right here. Just Seriously, like little... you can tell any war story, just put Call of Duty on it. You know, name the characters like uh, Soap and, you know, <laughs> all soap the and Captain characters. Price. And, and, yeah, Captain yeah. Price and all those guys. Alex Mason. You'll just make a shitload of money. What if they did a, a Destiny movie? Because that's their other big property. Now, you know what I'd rather see? Is a Destiny book. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. Remember the Halo incredible. books? They used to make the Halo books. Yeah. Yeah, I'd love to see his Destiny, like a series of Destiny books where they they go into some of the past, like some of the lore. You know, they expand on the story that they've hinted at with some stuff. And so much I'd lore they don't even use in the game. I would I definitely know. think books would be great. It'd be hard to make a Destiny movie. Like it'd be really hard because it's like the stuff is so fantastical. Like yep. imagine somebody doing a Nova Bomb on screen. Like how do you how oh, do you do that? Yeah. <laughs> you know, like how do you how do you make that look cool? And not be like, that's weird. How do you make it not the Dragon Ball movie, you know? <laughs> I mean, it'll, nothing will be that bad, okay? Uh, <laughs> they could do a trilogy, though, that, that could expand on all three classes in their own way. That would be awesome. And maybe do a fourth movie, kind of like the Avengers, where they bring them all together. That would be fucking sick. The first movie could have the Warlock. second movie could have the Hunter. Yeah. Third, third or, or they could do something that's kind of like, like a side story, like um, maybe like the how the – how the Vex were first discovered, or you know, like the um, first raid into the Vault of Glass with the, all those raiders who got forgotten in time, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. Like stuff like that, where it doesn't necessarily have to be like Guardians fighting. It could be, you know, it could be about like the collapse, or it could be about the first contact with a traveler. You know, it doesn't have to be set in the time that Destiny is right now. It could be mm-hmm. just in that universe, kind of expanding on the lore. Well, and it it's cool. At the end of the day, it's it's all about money, and and I think that that would make a shit ton of money. I think a Destiny book would too. If it was good, if it was good, I mean, if if you had told somebody in the '80s, let's make a Mario movie, it's gonna make a shit ton of money. <laughs> they would have said, yeah, probably will, because Mario is like the biggest thing since fucking yeah, Mickey I'm Mouse. Tried in the '90s. But... Yeah, and then then they did it, and uh, well. <laughs> no, I'm just, just Brian, I know you, you and I are about the same age. Do you remember the feeling you had the first time you saw the Mario movie? I what remember just, watching the commercials and be like, what a piece of shit this the, is. I'm, like, it's great. I'm, I'm a kid still living at home. My parents took me to see it, and I couldn't curse, but inside I said, what the fuck is this? Yeah. You know, All you could do is just stare at the screen, and you're like, that's a Goomba? Like I haven't seen that movie. Like, and Yoshi? Oh, like, Yoshi... Oh. Oh. Jurassic Park Raptor Face? Yeah. yeah, I was really upset with that. that, that I've never bad. seen that movie. It looked god awful, though. Jesus, it, it, it looked it bad. I saw a trailer for it. The only reason to watch it is just to like laugh at it. Kind of like the Street Fighter movie. Yeah, well, Street Fighter wasn't as bad. Street Fighter was laughably bad, though. It was yeah, bad. it was bad. Mario, Mario <laughs> it was, was worse, bad, But it was bad. <laughs> yeah, Mario was definitely worse. It, it really pissed me off as a young man. Yeah, I was a huge Street Fighter fan. When that movie came out, do you remember the game that was based on the movie? Yeah, yeah. Do you remember the movie? Oh, oh god, they didn't do that, really. Oh yeah, they did. Oh, oh yeah, god. they weren't playing. Kylie Minogue is Cammy. John Claude Van Damme has the most believable guy. Oh my god, were you and Claude, Ken Who even thought that was a good idea? John Claude Van Damme is guile. <laughs> Raw Julia as M Bison. That's oh, the best part of the movie. Yeah, he actually killed. That was his last movie before he passed away. Where you and Ken don't matter to the story at all. Just make them yeah. criminals. <laughs> Come on, they 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 really uh, they really let down tons of fans. I think the first video game movie I ever saw that I really liked was the very first Mortal Kombat because they stole the entire movie from Enter the Dragon and somehow it worked. Yeah, yeah, that wasn't bad. It doesn't hold up well like now. Yeah. Well, it doesn't hold up. The first up Tomb Raider movie, movie wasn't too bad. The first Resident Evil movie wasn't too bad. Uh, well, yeah. Well, compared to the, the latter Resident Evil movies, 
Yeah, I mean, exactly like, I, you got to judge these things on a bell curve. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there's some really fucking epically shitty video game movies. What, I think they can be what, really what good. Those I vampire movies that you Uwe Boll did. I mean, Blood anything Uwe Boll touched. Yeah, and he did, he did House of the Dead. He yeah. did Blood Rain. Blood Rain, uh, that was terrible. <laughs> that guy, he should be banned from making any movies ever. Yeah. Uh, I can't stand him. I don't know who he is as a person. I know what he looks like. But if I saw him in person, I'd go to jail for punching him in the face. He destroys yeah. video game franchises. <laughs> Before we go, guys, I know it's where we've actually hit time. Did any either of you guys see the Ronda Rousey fight yesterday? No, I missed that. I, I, I saw a highlight, though. Oh, cool my God. Ronda Rousey got knocked. Best fight Did in the world. she lose the first time? Is that yeah, what I heard? Last night, she got the shit kick out of her. It, it yeah. wasn't like a lucky fight like Anderson Silva. She got her ass whooped for uh, a whole round and another half of a round. Damn. Bad. It was it was awesome. And my thing is, I, I know she's a talented fighter, but when you get that, when you get that fool of yourself and your ego takes over, people begin to not like you. When you start to treat yourself like you're some kind of god. It takes a very humble blonde to come into the ring and beat your ass <laughs> to make you realize you're just a human being again. Yeah. So it's probably better in the end. She got her ass handed to her. Yeah. Yeah, just, we should. Uh, we should probably bring up to the. Uh, this has been a pretty violent week in the world as well with the shit that's been going on in Paris and yep. and it looks like there's stuff going on in Syria now today too and this has been a pretty violent week for the human race like just some complete animals. I mean, 120 people, not just at the rock concert in Paris, but in the different shops, different events. That one day, 120 people were killed. By civil terrorist attacks. That's absolutely horrible to take that in. That's just devastating. Yeah, I, I, I heard this story in passing, and it's unfortunate for anybody who's affected. Of course, we send our condolences. Do you guys know anything about the terrorists? Are, are these terrorists that America actually funded like the rest of them? Or are these terrorists that kind of started on their own and festered and became... ISIS attacked uh, oh, France. Okay. Oh, all right, well... Yeah, we know where that that's coming from. It's unfortunate, man. You know, the only thing that they can stop hate is love, man. So I love you guys. Peace. Yeah, that's a good way to end it, Beastly. Peace. 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 Yeah, all right. <laughs>